Good morning. Good morning. And welcome on this first Sunday after the Epiphany. Our service continues on page 355 of the prayer book. And for those of you who are watching online, let me just say welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so glad that you are here. And we welcome all of you who are new or visiting John's Memorial today. We are very happy to see you. And please let us know if anybody needs any assistance during the service. So we will continue on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. While a wind from God swept over the face of the waters, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from Acts. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came unto them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, and people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. 
I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the, the, the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Please be seated. The young attorney walked into his boss's office, and his boss said, I want you to go to Burnley to talk with a man about opening a bank. And the young attorney looks at his boss and says, you must be kidding, is this a joke? And he said, no, no, there's a man in Burnley who wants to open a bank. And, um, and the young attorney said, but there have not been any new banks open in 150 years. And he said, well, then it'll be a fast job. Because, you're, and, and he said, well, why do they need an attorney? It doesn't matter why they need an attorney. They want an attorney, so you'll go, you'll listen to them, you'll tell them this is impossible, and you'll come back home. Well, that's just the beginning of that story. And like our gospel lesson today, we are hearing the beginning of Mark, but we know it's not really the beginning. Because the beginning began when God created heaven and earth and brought, created light and dark. And so we know, and we know through the Psalms that God had developed a relationship with God's people. And so there was a connection there. There was something that was happening before Mark came on the scene. And so in the Gospel of Mark, he is in such a hurry, he is. He just wants to get through this. He wants people to know this is the one who's come. But it's sort of a secret, so it's not entirely out there. And, but he's not going to spend time on the birth story. So that we don't hear of Mary and Joseph or the shepherds or the magi or the animals or the inn. And so Mark has started out with Jesus has come to Na from Nazareth to the Jordan River, where John the baptizer is baptizing. Now, why Jesus decided to go that day, we don't know really why he decided to go that day, at least Mark doesn't tell us why he decided to go that day. And I can just sort of imagine that John is out in the River Jordan, and he's baptizing people, and he is doing what he re refers to as a baptism of repentance. And he sees Jesus coming. And so he waves to Jesus, come on up here, you can jump the line, come on. And Jesus is like, no, I'll wait in line. I'll just stay right here. And so John is, goes through, he's baptizing, and then, um, but he tells the people, there's one greater there's one greater that's coming, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus gets up there and John baptizes him, as we hear in the scripture, that the, the spirit of the Lord descended on him like a dove. And, and I just, every time I read that, I want to go, whoo, it's like fireworks. Like well, the, the spirit, just, you know, the heavens parted. And so that you was like, wow, how could you have been there and not notice that? 
how could you be, you may not have heard the next thing, you may not have heard Jesus say, or God say to Jesus, you are my beloved, with you I am well pleased. You may not have heard that, but when the heaven and the earth were ripped open, you had to have heard that. And so, which makes me wonder, did the, the people have this sense of community with everybody else that was there because they, they participated in something that they didn't know exactly what was going on, but they knew that something major had happened. They knew. Well, going back to Dave. Some of you may have already figured out, I'm telling you, the story of the Bank of Dave. And I want to encourage you to go home and Google this and listen to uh, interviews with Dave. This is a real life story. Or go to Netflix and watch it. It was a recommendation from one of you. Thank you very much. And um, we have enjoyed it very much. And I want you to watch it for the theological significance and for, and certainly in this time of epiphany. Because what you see in this story is Dave, Dave Fishbeck is a minibus salesman who happens to be quite successful at it and has several franchises of his business. And he is a, he's just a people's people kind of guy. He goes to karaoke night and gets up and sings and everybody loves him. And Dave, um, Dave has been successful in his business. And so when a friend needs some money, he offers them money. And when they pay it back, as they always do, and will give him some interest on it, he gives it to charity. And so one day somebody said, and his wife repeated, I believe, Dave, you really should open the Bank of Dave. Because people started saying, oh, this is the Bank of Dave. Just go ask Dave. If you were somebody in the community and you couldn't get a loan, go to Dave. So the Bank of Dave. And so Dave, you see Dave thinking about this and going, the Bank of Dave. You know, this could be, this could be helpful to the community because in this community, people, what they were borrowing money for often were to start businesses or to fund a clinic or to provide meals. And Dave was able to meet that need that a larger bank wouldn't do. So back to the young attorney. So the young attorney thinks, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna meet Dave, and this is gonna be over. And I'm gonna head back home. But he gets there and he starts talking with people and he sees how successful he has been. But you can, but he, and he goes back and he thinks, well, I don't, really think this is going to happen, but I'll go and talk with the banking people. And the banking people say, there has not, there, there's not been a new banking charter in 150 years. It's, this is in England, and um, so no, no, this is going to happen. And Dave made a really sort of compelling case to this young attorney when he said, you know, there, there are large supermarket chains, and, and then there are these mom and pop grocery stores on the corner. How, why can't there be large bank chains and then mom and pop banks on the corner that support the people of the community and give back to the people in the community? and help the people in the community start businesses, hire people, be able to create, build clinics to serve the people in the community. And so Dave knew that this was a long shot and he knew, but he also knew, and this young attorney knew that the bankers weren't very popular. They, had, um, they were not the most highly regarded people. Um, because many of the bankers had been charging, they had charged large interest rates and they had taken large salaries while people who didn't have anything weren't getting loans and were not being treated well. And so Dave said, you know, I'd, I'd like to give this a shot. Even, even if, it, even if it, I, it doesn't work out, I feel like I've done something. Well, when the young attorney, whose name is you, goes to meet with them, the, um, the bankers sort of just laugh at him and say, oh, no, nobody's done that, you can't do that. Well, the story goes on and you see Dave, each time you'll see 
something will happen. Somebody will say something to Dave. You know, this is the part to watch. Dave steps away. And whether it's Dave says he's going to go back to London, or he's going to go sit in his car, or he's going to go sort of like somebody else we know who would take the time to separate himself from the people to pray and then come back. Now, I don't know that Dave was a Christian. I don't know that you, the attorney, was a question. And I also should say that what it says at the beginning of this film is it's truish, truish. So some, some things in the story aren't exactly, but I should also tell you this bank has been functioning for over 10 years. So it is, and um, it came out last year in England up against Barbie and Oppenheimer and one other movie, and it won an award for the best feature film of 2023, up against Barbie and Oppenheimer. And so when Netflix took this on, Dave had already done a documentary, so they could pick it up and, and take it and work with it and put very little money into it. Well, they've gotten, they've gotten their money back out of that for sure, for sure. So as the movie goes on, the, bank, the banker said, okay, okay, we'll give this guy a shot, but let's just make it so hard to come into this. It's gonna be so expensive. There is no way he can make the money. To, to start this business that he needs to give the banking industry. We'll set it at 12 million. And so the attorney goes back to Burnley and says, well, they said, okay, but it's gonna, you have to give them 12 million up front. And so Dave said, well, I've got these franchises, my minibus um, franchises, and, um, and I've got my home, but that's not gonna, that, that won't get me 12 million. So there was somebody in that, that Dave had introduced you to who was connected to the band. Some of you may remember Def Leppard. Yeah? And so anyway, I'm glad you remember it because I really don't. <laughs> Just in pure honesty. But anyway, so this man was like the cousin or the uncle or somehow connected with this band. And so Dave goes back, and you can see Dave thinking, okay, we don't have 12 million. Where are we going to get it? And then he thinks, oh, Def Leppard. I will call. I will call the uncle or the guy who, was, who worked with them and see about putting on a concert. And so he calls. And I was like, sure, we'll do that for Dave. And you've got the whole town going, for Dave, we'll do that for Dave. And because they could see that this wasn't just for Dave, it was for their community. And so the band comes out, and the night of the performance, they're still short. And so you can see you, the attorney, walking out to his car just thinking, Oh man, do we, you know, we have given this a good shot, but you know, we're a million dollars short. And then you see him get out of his car and go back in where the arena. His boss, his boss just happened to be a big fan of Def Leppard. And so he had come to the concert. And so you says, how about, if, um, would you be interested in buying my condo in London? And so basically the story is he gets enough money, and so they make the 12 million, and so he can begin the business. And so I'm not gonna tell you any more about the story other than the fact it doesn't stop there. It keeps on going, and in one of the interviews, Dave talks about, you know, they took on the big banks, and in the 10 years that they have been open, he has loaned out, they have loaned out over 33 million pounds to Burnley residents, and any money that's made goes to the community. So the money's made in Burnley, and it's used in Burnley. And um, so, 
the interviewer on a BBC news program said, well, so what's the plan, what's next? And he said, well, Netflix is already working on a sequel. And it was the fastest sequel that's ever come about because they already know what they're working with. So what is it? And he said, well, it's about dealing with the payday lenders that are, are ripping people off. And so this is the last line, I love this. He, they've said, it's a way to shine light on what is happening. That when he, in showing what the big banks are doing or what the payday lenders are doing and how the little guy is getting hurt, this is a way to shine light on an unjust system. Now, when you see Dave, you'll have to say, well, this, golly, this guy is certainly, he has got lots of personality. And, um, but you know, it didn't just start that day. It, it didn't just start when he was singing karaoke and people were coming up to him and saying, you know, thank you for your loan and, and, and his wife saying, you, you know, you should open the, the bank of Dave. The impossible, the impossible starts long before the miracle. The impossible starts somewhere back in time, Dave got into the minibus business. But that wasn't his first business, he had another business. But then when he got into that and it ended up being successful, the second thing that ha tends to happen is the impossible combines with old structures to form the ha with, and with new innovation. So he was able, he said, okay, I'll work with the attorneys, I'll work with the banking industry, and we'll, we'll work with them, and we'll turn this around. And then the impossible invites the person to consider what is possible and are they willing to do it? And dear people of God, that's where we are today. That is exactly where we are today in Epiphany, that we have seen God call on Jesus, baptize him in the Holy Spirit, and we too have been baptized in the name of the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus is baptized in the name of the Holy Spirit, he we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit in unity, in unity. And they are functioning, and if in as he goes out to do his ministry, God is with him, and the Holy Spirit is directing him. And we have that potential. And in fact, that's what God is calling us to do, is to think about what is it that God has placed on our hearts? What has God said, you know what? You've got a gift for this, and I think you better do it, you know? And you've gone, no, 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 I'm not gonna do that, I'm not gonna do that. And then something comes together and you think, well, I guess, you know, for Dave, all these people in his community supported him. The research is very firm on that. If you wanna raise up good kids, you get good support in the community. If you wanna raise up good people, you provide good support, all kinds of support. To, to lift people up and to give people the sense that you can do this. And so, dear people of God, last week I gave you cards that are about this size and asked you to write down your intention for the year. What would be your intention? One person went out and said, as they were going out, said theirs was service. Mine is still on my bulletin board. It says joy. That It has been there for, I, for probably six or seven years now from the day I got it. And I still, that is my intention, is to be a person filled with joy. I don't think at this point in my life I'm going to start a business, and maybe you aren't either, but maybe your, maybe the word you had was hope. Maybe you're called to give hope to someone this year. Or maybe your call was to start a new business, or to expand a business, or to retire from a business or to take on a prayer ministry, or a music ministry, 
that we each have been called. God has planted that seed in our hearts. And it didn't, it's not just starting today. It didn't just start last week when you decide what it, your intention for the year is going to be. It was planted a long time ago. And God will help you and walk with you, and your community will walk with you as you take that light out into the world because you are the light of the world. You are beloved children of God. You can believe that, and you can even take it to the bank, the bank of God, not the bank of Dave, but the bank of God, that you are a beloved child of God. And God wants the best for you, and God wants God's light to shine in the world for all the world to see. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are in your service leaflet. In the waters of baptism, we were called to be God's children and to minister to one another. Let us therefore pray for ourselves, for one another, and for all those in need of our prayer, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church, that it may stand fast in the one faith to which it has been called. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the world that our conflicts may cease and that peace may reign in this new year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all Christians who have been baptized into the one family of faith, that our lives reflect the forgiveness and love which was first shown us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are blind to the injustices of our world, that their eyes may be opened and that they may work for an end to oppression and injustice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick, especially Jimmy, Grace, Alan, Elsie, Annie, Ed, Gail, Robin, Betty, Alexis, Pauline, Vera, 
Warren, Micah, Kim, Ginny, Kevin, Nancy, Denise, the King family, and all those we mention at this time. That their sickness may be turned to health and that they may once again join us in our work and worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray for the faithful who have gone before us, that we may follow the example of their lives and be reunited with them in the joy of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Omniscient God, you know our thoughts and needs better than we ourselves. Accept the prayers which we now offer and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another in peace. Peace, 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 peace. Peace be with you. Peace, peace be with you. Peace, peace, peace be with you. Hey, hey. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. You may be seated. Are there birthdays or anniversaries this week? Birthdays or anniversaries? I be Birthdays or anniversaries? A, a birthday? Mary Evelyn? I heard that you had a birthday. Is that true? Well, come on down then. Right here. <laughs> right here in front of everyone. Does everyone know Mary Evelyn? If you don't, you need to meet her at coffee hour. Her birthday is on Tuesday. And what? say that again, Mary Evelyn. How old are you going to be? 80. 80. That deserves applause. <laughs> Well, we are so glad. Feel free to sit down, Mary Evelyn, if you'd be more comfortable. Okay, the birthday prayers are on page 830. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant, Mary Ellen, as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life and the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be with her and remain with her always. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. We're, we're so glad that you're here with us, just that we can celebrate your birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Are there anniversaries? Anniversaries? No. Well, um, are there any announcements from the congregation? I, uh, I don't see Brad Cohn this morning, but, Bra but, but Brad Cohn made an announcement last week about um, Michael Utzinger's Bible study, and I understand that there were some new people there. Is that correct? Yes. 
And so I want to encourage you all to know that that is happening on Thursday evenings at 7 o'clock in the parlor. So please, um, if you are interested in a Bible study, that is an excellent one. Um, I want to remind you that Safe Church Training is coming, and it's coming to John's Memorial. And if you are a vestry member or a staff member or have direct contact with children, you need to take Safe Church Training. And there is a universal um, program, and there's a specialized program. And um, the... One program is an all-day program, and the other one is just like an hour-and-a-half program, and you need to go to the Diocese of Southern Virginia, diasova.org, and to sign up for safe church training. But it is a requirement of the national church. That's not just a diocesan policy. It is of the national church. It can be done online, but I will tell you being um, with the trainers in person, um, I, I think you learn a lot more. So, then that is on the 20th and 21st. Um, I also want to call to your attention that this is a short period. You know, we had a short time between, um, we only had one Sunday after Christmas, and um, when, and sometimes we have two, and the the season after Epiphany, I believe, is only going to be five weeks. So it's just five weeks until Ash Wednesday and Shrove T Tuesday. So all of you pancake makers, please put this on your calendar. Shrove Tuesday is on February 13th, and there will be pancakes. I'm counting on you all to do those wonderful pancakes. And, um, and that is a family event, and I hope that you all will put that on your calendar. For There will be more information coming out about it. And then our Ash Wednesday service will be, well, there will be two services on Ash Wednesday at 12.05 and at 5.30. And, um, and then that will set us in motion for Lent. Are there other announcements? I will uh, say if you are new to the Episcopal Church or um, are not familiar with our communion in this church, and it is in the Episcopal Church, it is the custom that when you come forward to receive the Eucharist, that you put your hands out like such, and I will put a wafer in your hand. And if you prefer a gluten free, wait, yeah, a gluten-free wafer, then just let me know because we have the regular wheat and we have gluten-free ones. The wine that is served is real wine, and it is our custom to drink out of one cup, and if you prefer not to drink out of the common cup, but would like wine, if you just make that known to me. And so when the server who is behind me with the wafers I can take the wafer, dip it in the cup, and pass it to you, and then you can put it in your mouth. Um, there was a time in the Episcopal Church where we could, and tinked, that we could actually take the wafer ourselves and put it in the wine, but we do not do that, at least in this diocese, any longer. At John's Memorial, it is our custom that to welcome everyone to the table of the Lord. Come. Come and meet Jesus here. There's a place for you, for everyone, at the table of the Lord. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, 
to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he, when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The congregation may be seated.
Turning to page 366, let us pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Go to coffee hour and be sure to wish Mary Evelyn a very happy birthday. Thanks be to God.